praise the Lord in his house this morning. I want to invite you to turn to Exodus chapter 17. We're going to be back there today. We looked at the first seven verses yesterday. We're still in our series, From Slavery to Sinai. So we travel with the folks of Israel through the wilderness. See what we can learn today. Exodus chapter 17. Beginning in verse 8, we'll read through verse 16. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel at Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. And Joshua did as Moses had said to him. And fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Ur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Ur stayed up his hands. The one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. And he said, Because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Would you pray with me? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, as we get quiet before you, we just settle before your throne, Father. We thank you. Father, for this music team that has led us to this place. And Father, we thank you for the sweet Holy Spirit, Father, that has drawn us here. And Father, upon the reading of the word, Father, the preaching of the word, Father, we ask for your power and might, God, to be manifest among us, to be evident in our lives. Father, to go forth with us to reach a lost and a dying world. So Father, today we just say, have your way as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as I said last week together, we were in <coughs> verses 1 through 7 and saw water flow from a rock. Amazing, wasn't it? They were in dry land. There was no water around. God told Moses to take the staff, to tap the rock, and water would come flowing out. And sure enough, the water of life came flowing freely. Amen? It did just what God said. Well, here, after water from a rock, came war. The children of Israel were refreshed and rejoicing and receiving that fresh water of life, but trouble followed this great triumph. And remember, Jesus said, in this world, we shall have tribulation, right? We looked at it last week in John chapter 16 and verse 33. And then it came. When does it usually come in our life? After a great triumph, doesn't it? When we're on the mountaintop, it's not long before trouble comes. When we've just had a big triumph in our life. So uh, listen, I don't mind telling you, if you're on top of the world right now, praise God for it. But be alert. Amen? Amen. Be alert. As Peter said, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary the devil seeketh whom he may devour. Amen? A lot of times that's when we let our guard down. So here comes the attack of Amalek and his descendants. Amalek, he was the grandson of Esau. He 
go back and you look that up, that's who he was. And well, here's Joshua. Joshua leads this select force in the battle. And Moses and Aaron and Ur, the Bible says, are overseeing the conflict from a hilltop. Again, we saw that in verse 10. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek and Moses. Aaron and Ur went up to the top of the hill. So what can we learn from this this morning? What does this have to do with our church? What does this have to do with our church? Well, first, we need to learn and understand that we are in a battle. Verse 10 shows that. I mean, right? Am I wrong? I mean, the forces of evil, church, are arrayed against us. Let me remind you of Ephesians chapter 6 here. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12 here. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Church, whether you want to see it or not, whether you want to recognize it or not, there is a war going on among us. And so, so the spiritual battles we face are inevitable. Verse 8 says, Then came Emily. As I think about that, how they just seem to come out of nowhere. And the enemy came with antagonism and with opposition. And how the enemy came at a point of vulnerability. Like I said, they were having that mountaintop experience. Amen? Enjoying that water, man. Came out of nowhere. Listen, y'all, there are mistaking ideas about the work of the church. We are not just here to preach and teach. We are not just here to raise money for the kingdom. We are not just here to run programs. Brothers and sisters, we are here to do battle with the enemy. And we've got to understand that this morning. I'm telling you this morning, the ship of Zion, folks, is not a cruise ship. Amen. The ship of Zion is a battleship that we're on. So we've got to take off the baby bibs that we wear on the cruise ship that says, serve me, right? And we've got to put on the work aprons of a battleship that says, what can I do? To serve the Lord. Lord, what will you have me to do today? We are in a battle. I mean, hey, do you realize that eternal issues are at stake here this morning? Souls are hanging in the balance. Our standards of righteousness are being compromised every day. The foundations of decency are crumbling right before us. And it's time the church stands and fights. But guess what? Yes, we're in a battle, but by brothers and sisters, we are equipped to win the battle. I mean, we have the power of the gospel. On our side. Look at here. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Paul said. For it is the power of God. <coughs> unto salvation to everyone. That believeth. To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. <laughs> Paul said I am ashamed of this gospel. 
In other words, I'm not scared to go tell the gospel to anybody. Because I know it is the power of God unto salvation. And people need the Lord. Amen? Amen. I want to encourage you this morning. Don't you be ashamed of the gospel. Get out there and tell it to somebody. Because people need to hear. And then we have the power of the Holy Spirit on our side. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. We what, church? We are overcomers in Christ Jesus because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do you realize that today? The Holy Spirit, if you are born again, he lives inside. He indwells there. This is his home. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So what are we scared of? <laughs> he goes before us. He paves the way. We have to trust him. The power of the gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit is on our side. And then, above all that, we have the armor of God. You remember Ephesians chapter 6? Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having your breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, Taking the shield of faith wherewith ye are able to quench all the fire. How many? All. all of the fiery darts of the devil. My goodness, what are we waiting on, church? We are equipped to win this battle. I'm just saying this morning that the ultimate victory is sure. It is sure, church. Check this out, 1 Corinthians. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. <clears throat> when you're doing it in the name of Jesus, brothers and sisters, it's never in vain. We just need to stand and move forward. What else? <clears throat> what else? What, I mean, What's this message about for our church? Well, I want to share with you secondly this morning. The truth. We may become weary in this battle. Back to verse 11 and 12. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Ur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So here we see Israel's <coughs> secret weapon, if you will, in war with Amethyst. The Bible says when Moses held up his hands, when he held up his hands, Israel prevailed. And when Moses let down his hands, Amalek prevailed. And then the Bible says that Moses' arms became weary, allowing Amalek the advantage here. Now, now remember, Moses was their pastor, right? He, I mean, he was their pastor, but he was also human, wasn't he? Absolutely. Hey, did you know that your pastor sometimes begins, becomes weary? Sure he does. I mean, fatigue is associated with ministry. 
I mean, there's the fatigue that follows preaching, folks. I know. He just gets up there for 30 minutes and talks, right? <laughs> I want to tell you, you have no idea that when you do it with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, the fatigue that comes along after that message is delivered. It literally can drain you. And then there's the fatigue that follows long hours of study. N not to even mention the fatigue that comes from spiritual conflict. It weighs on you. And, and so each one of us, each and every one of us sometimes fights fatigue, right? Right? Sure we do. I mean, I mean, listen, the, the, the spiritual battles that we face are serious. And they're exhausting in our lives. And so we all need help in the battle. That's what I'm trying to say. We all do. Every one of us. So what can we do to win on our weekdays? What can we do? Well, thirdly, we see that we can hold up the hands of those who are weary. We'll say that again. We can hold up the hands of those who are weary. That's what they did there in verse 12. Here we see that a stone was provided so that Moses could rest. Aaron and Ur, the Bible says, held up the arms of Moses. They held up his hands. So here they are supporting God's man. What a beautiful picture for the church. Just like God intended it for it to be. Us, in unity, together, holding up each other. What a beautiful picture. So how can we do that? How can we hold up weary hands in our church? I think number one, by praying for one another. Hey, I've got a big shout out this morning to our prayer warriors. I'm telling you, they have been busy over these past few weeks. There's a lot going on around us, amen? amen? Death and illness. Don't give up, prayer warriors. You keep on keeping on. You keep on holding up those weary folks' hands in prayer. And, and how, how about by refusing to criticize one another? Hey, that goes a long way, doesn't it? And we can hold each other up by encouraging one another. Church, you all have been so encouraging to me. So encouraging to me. Not just in words, but in deeds. In, in generosity. y'all were praying for me as I was traveling this past week. And if any of you have ever driven for Atlanta, you knew I needed it. <laughs> I mean, I needed it. Some of you expressed your generosity to me. Church, you holding my arms up in a time of vulnerability. And I just want to say thank you from the depths of my heart for you loving me in such a way. Encouraging me in such a way. 
Another way that we can hold up each other's arms is by faithfully worshiping with one another. Faithfully worshiping with one another. I mean, it is so uplifting when we are here together serving one another. Everybody being in their place when they're supposed to be there. It is so uplifting and so encouraging as we worship the Lord together. We're holding one another up in faith and doing it faithfully. And also by joining together to win people. I want to tell you, this pastor was so blessed yesterday. I got a phone call about mid-morning. But Jeff, is there any letterhead of the church up at the church? I'm thinking, yeah, I think we got some. Where is it? And I began to share with him where it was. And they began to share with me, Brother Jeff, we're fixing to go out and knock on some doors in the neighborhood. I'm like, wow. Really? How can I help? Yeah, I'll come help you find some stationery. Church, yesterday we had three missionaries. You know what the preacher was doing when he hung on the phone? He was doing his happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you right now, the Holy Spirit is moving in this church, in this community. And we just got to be willing like Aaron and like Ur, and we've got to just hold each other. Because there will be times in our life when we're on this journey that we will get weary. But don't let it stop you. You call somebody, I'm weak right now. And let us come alongside you and let us hold your arms up for the glory of God. Amen? And we'll keep moving on. And we'll keep seeing victory after victory after